Hello everyone, Leah here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you all of my favorite art supplies of 2022. As this year is coming to an end and 2023 is about to begin, I thought it'd be a great exercise for myself to look back at the supplies that I've been using for the past year, which ones I really gravita gravitated to, and ones that I honestly regret buying. Uh, but that will be a different video um, so, uh, let's get started. I'm not too sure what to start with this. There's just so much here. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to start with this with my gesso. Um, I have been using this for a couple of years now, actually. And it's my go-to always use when I'm painting with my acrylics on paper or on, uh, wood canvas boards or anything like that, that hasn't been already pre-primed. Uh, I have a video on my channel where I go over gesso, applying gesso, why you want to apply the gesso. So I'm going to put a link to it. So if you're interested in prepping your surfaces, just take a peek at the video and you'll learn a little bit more about why I love this so much. Next, let's Let's just go with this. Um, <laughs> so right here is a non-art supply item, but something that I use all the time, and that are color swatches. So when it comes to painting, I'm a huge fan of having color swatches for every color that I have. On the back, I'll write down the name brand, the name of the color, and sometimes I'll write down pigment information, especially if it's watercolors. The reason why I love having these is that it really is useful to use when you are trying to think of what color palette to use for a painting. It really helps you go, okay, I really like these four colors, but you know what? Because this brown is on the redder side, should I do these or these you know type of thing it's really useful for that also having color swatches is kind of handy if you're a lot like me and um you shop online for your art supplies or anything like that and you have several of them it lets you keep track of the colors that you have already so you don't end up with any duplicates plus when you do cards like this, it gives you an opportunity to see what the paint's gonna be like before you even start painting. So this by Golden is, as you can see, quite glossy. You know, like that's the finished surface. Or this one here has more of a satin matte And I keep it in just this old plastic container. Um, <laughs> this container actually once upon a time used to house a camera remote for um, triggering your lights when you take photos and things like that. That remote itself did not live as long as this box. Plastic is for life sometimes. And keeping with acrylics. Let's talk about my favorite acrylic paint. Charvin. So Charvin is a uh, manufacturing brand from France. I came across these paints actually while I was looking for acrylic paint that wasn't high gloss. Um, the thing about acrylics is that a lot of brands have a plasticky glossy finish when they're dry and I'm not a huge fan of that I want my paint to be almost matte slash satiny it's my preferred uh, finish and I came across these I found them at Jerry's Artorama um, online and I fell in love with these paints they are my favorite to use and what's great about them is that the swatching up here is accurate to the color that you'll see. So when I did my swatches here, the colors were the same. 
so it's color accurate as well on here if you are not the type to do color swatching okay there's these and then um we're gonna yeah okay i'm gonna just put this here and then because i'm gonna stick with the acrylic line of supplies i'm gonna talk about this item right here it is a glass palette. It's from the company New Wave, but you can buy them. It doesn't matter what brand you go with. Uh, when it comes to painting with acrylics, I absolutely love using glass palettes for mixing my uh, colors. It's because of the ease of use for cleaning. You can just scrape it off and it away you go versus using say a plastic something or throw away palette papers or anything like this. This for me is the way to go just cause it'll last longer. It's easy to clean. And I went with the gray color versus white because I was finding when I was using my clear glass palette on my white table that when it came to mixing colors like off white, so it'd be say, a super pastel -y pink or yellow or anything like that. I was mixing them darker than I intended them to be, where when I mix on this gray surface, my colors, I find mixing colors to be far more um, accurate and enjoyable. Like I can see what I'm doing better. And yeah, this is by far my favorite. I also like the new wave one because the edges are soft and the corners are covered in this rubber. And the rubber itself also acts as like little rubber feet on the bottom so it doesn't move when it's on the table. I'm gonna put that there. Next up, let's talk about this. This here is my um, Stillman and Burn Alpha series sketchbook. I don't use it for drawing or uh, practicing. I use it for color mixing for tracking colors that I have, for seeing what I'm doing, um, for just mixing colors and seeing what kind of things I can get. I primarily love using it nowadays for tracking the colors and testing colors as I'm doing paintings. So for a while back in the year, I was doing a painting a day so every day I sat down to do a painting, I wrote down the colors that I was using. And if I wasn't too sure about a color, I would swatch it out onto the paper to just be like, yeah, yeah, that's the color I want. Or if I'm remixing it to make sure it's the same color. What's great about the Stillman and Burn Alpha Series sketchbooks that I love so much is the fact that these paper, like this sheet of paper, it's... It's nice and stiff, it's thick and durable, and it is great for a, f a full range of things. Um, I have Alpha uh, series sketchbooks that I do with sketching and drawing and painting and things like that. I just thought I'd show this one because of the purpose that I use it. I use this one the most because of the color swatching. I've had it for a while as you can see I think I've had it for well I got it before 2022 but yeah this alpha series sketchbook is great you can do a little bit of everything in it I'll just put this somewhere here mm. Yeah, okay, paintbrushes. When it comes to painting with my acrylics, I have two brands that I gravitate towards. This one right here, which is the Catalyst line of paintbrushes by Princeton. Um, they are, I prefer the long handle ones. They have short handle versions, but I prefer the long handle. Their build is quite durable. They're smooth and easy to hold in the hands. And because I do not take care of my brushes whatsoever, I'm not very kind to them, I find that these are very durable. And 
What's nice about the bristles itself is that they are stiff, but not so stiff that there isn't any bend. Like you can have different types of bristle types that are really stiff and thick hair, and you can get different types of textures with them. This is just the one that I prefer. And the other one that I really like to use when I'm doing my acrylics is this brand called Royal and it's an L word, Logother. No, that's a clothing brand, isn't it? Um, and, but it doesn't say on here, it just says Royal Soft Grip because it's a soft gripped handle. Um, the reason why I like these is because they are plastic handled, because I leave my paint brushes in the dirty water for so long, I don't really take care of them. Most paint brushes, I have not had that problem with these ones though, they're coated and then that coating ends up chipping off, but I don't have that problem with these because they're plastic. And what's great about these ones in comparison to the Princeton is that their bristles are extremely soft and absorbent. So depending on what I'm going for, this might be what I need for texture or for getting drippies or anything like that. I really like these two. And when I want to hold it like I would with a long handle from a distance, I still can do that even though they're not long handles. You just hold them from the tip and you can be more loose with it. Next up, let's go with my watercolors because in the year 2022, I met and fell in love with Roman Schmal's watercolors. They are my favorite go-to watercolor paint along with Mission Gold. The thing I find when it comes to watercolors is that there are some brands out there like say Daniel Smith, as an example, that when you buy a tube of paint, you're spending 20 to $30 for a tube of paint. And when you are trying out something new, that is a huge financial commitment to something. And I'm not a fan of it. Where with Roman Small and Mission Gold, you have options for friendlier price ranges. The Roman Small specifically, they come in full pans and they can range from $4 to $7. And those are Canadian prices also, keep in mind. Um, so these are far more beginner friendly price ranging and color options. Roman Schmalls has so many colors. They come in convenience colors and your traditional mixing colors that they're a great starter brand because they are high quality and great pricing. I have a review where I did a review on Roman Small, so I can link to it so you can get a more in-depth um, understanding of the paint. But these are my go-tos. And I've been using this paint palette set the most. Um, I created my own color palette out of Roman Small and the um, Mission Gold and I created an autumn and a spring palette. And these colors all work together as a whole. And then as a single unit, they also are my favorite. I use them all the time. I'm gonna be creating more palettes like this, I think in the future. I found doing this kind of thing with watercolors made it more enjoyable for when I'm sitting down to do a painting. There's less stress in picking out colors, knowing what colors that will mix well together when you pre-package pre it like this. Just gonna put that over here and also, I'm going to talk about watercolor brushes on the channel. You, if you are not um, familiar with my channel, you might not know this, but Princeton has the best, in my opinion, watercolor brushes. Their Neptune line is the perfect synthetic paintbrush. It has a reasonable price range um, depending on the sizing you want to go with. So this is a size eight round. It makes nice, firm point when it's wet 
and they're super absorbent so you can get a lot of use out of your paint that's on there. Um, it's actually among one of my most popular videos on here is my review of the Princeton uh, Neptune paintbrush. So I'll also leave a link to that in the description along with this one right here. Um, it's a new to me paintbrush. I've had it for a few months now and I use it all the time when I'm doing my landscapes. It has become one of my favorites this year. It's a dagger brush. So it's the shape that makes it the dagger brush. Um, it's also a synthetic paintbrush. I love the versatility that I can get onto this shape that I've been really enjoying because I can get really thick lines or really thin ones when I'm doing landscapes. So these have been my go-to paintbrushes for watercolor. And for palettes, like for mixing when I'm not using the palette that it's in, so something like this, like I just got this on Amazon and it does me just fine mixing on the metal. But every once in a while when I'm using fresh out of it, you know, a paint tube or anything like that, or if I wanna get a lot, so a well's worth of liquid to do a huge area. I prefer porcelain palettes over plastic or anything like that. And the reasoning is cleaning. Some people say porcelain palettes are best for paint staying wet the longest and things like that. I haven't really noticed a difference, but it could be the timelines that I do in my paintings, but I haven't noticed porcelain over plastic keeping the paint drier uh, no, sorry, wet longer, so it doesn't dry up as fast. But I have noticed that this is easier to clean, where with plastic, they stain. Um, so yes, porcelain is my favorite to use, and it has been, this one specifically, has been my go-to to grab this year. I have more stuff than what you just see here. I'm also gonna talk about my favorite sketchbook and papers, but I think I wanna go through all the little things first before I pull it out and show you some examples. So I'm just gonna go over this next, which is a basic pencil sharpener, but um, I've seen it all over and I've seen it on several um, artist channels on YouTube where they'll just show the paintbrush, you know, sitting, like, sorry, not the paintbrush, the, uh, Pencil sharpener will just be sitting in the frame or they'll use it for like two seconds, but they don't mention what it is. And I thought I would let you guys know what makes this so popular amongst a lot of artists um, is the fact that it has two sharpening spots and it's not to do two different sizes of pencils. The first one will cut down all the wood on your pencil and the second one sharpens the lead to make it a really fine point. So if you're looking for more of a blunted end but you want a lot of lead exposed, sharpen with this side. If you want a super sharp um, point, you then sharpen on this end. I have two of these. They're really handy to have and what's great is because they have a little lid here, if you're gonna be painting say outside or drawing outside, especially when I'm sitting out on the patio with my dog, I know that I don't need to bring any garbage bags or anything with me, I just need this and I don't have to worry about you know it going or my dog chasing it or licking it or doing anything like that. This here is a palette knife. <laughs> I actually this year have been loving using palette knives with my watercolor paint. I have not really been using them with my acrylics, which they are technically designed for, um, but that's okay. I'm a firm believer that when it comes to creating abstract or texture or anything like that, when it comes to watercolor or acrylics, use what you have on hand. Um, some people will use old gift cards and use that to scrape paint around or cut lines into the paper to get texture and darkness and do little things with it. Um, I've had this palette knife for, for I don't know, 15 years maybe. <laughs> um, it's actually, I think I got it um, when I was in high school. The uh, college, the local college was, had a painting class and I signed up for it and it was ha painting with the palette knives type thing and I needed to go on and buy a bunch of palette knives to do the class and this happens to be one of them and I have held on to it that entire time. 
So yes, palette knife. Um, next up, let's talk about my wedge. I This is also a Princeton catalyst. And yes, guys, I have a lot of Princeton stuff. In Canada, Princeton is a pretty um, easily accessible brand. And I know that Princeton is also available internationally as well. I, I've seen it on Jerry's Artorama, on Jackson's um, art supply website. So Princeton is a pretty well-known brand. They're pretty much everywhere. Um, in Canada, we don't get everything that you can get everywhere else. Um, I've noticed like my favorite acrylics, the uh, Charvin, I can only get them at Jerry's. So yeah, I find that a little annoying, especially because this paint brand is so great. I wish I could just, when I'm running out of one, go down to the local art supply store and pick one up, but I can't. Um, but yeah, definitely worth it in my opinion. So if you're interested in trying something new, especially because this paint brand doesn't have a smell to me, it doesn't give me migraines, um, I would say grab a couple of your favorite colors off of this one and test it out and see if you like it and then buy more. Um, I just dove right in when I did the Charvin. I grabbed a bunch of colors. I grabbed my favorite colors, colors that, that looked intriguing and I wasn't too sure about. You know, I just pretty much grabbed them all. And then I, um, I was, it's a good thing I did because I fell in love type thing, but could have easily gone the other way. But yeah, I love this wedge because it's hard rubber. It's got a little bit of a bend here on the thinner end, but I use it for doing thick layers and when I'm doing my um, abstract stuff. I'll show you some examples when I'm showing you my favorite paper and sketchbook, um, how I use this. But I've had it for years and I wasn't using it for the longest of time. And this year when I really looked for different ways to do abstract art, I found that this was my I went to this all the time. Next up, let's talk about Posca pens. I feel like they don't really need much of an introduction. Um, and in the art community, pretty much everybody has either tried them or owned them or uses them. But if you are new to using art as a tool for healing, um, Posca pens are acrylic markers that you can shake up and then draw with um <laughs> i have a video on tiktok where i talk about the problems with using posca pens because i hadn't been using them for a while and then at the beginning of uh last year i actually started using them again and so if you leave like with any art supply if you leave something sitting for a long period of time you have the option of it drying up or going bad because materials settle and things happen, right? Well, Posca pens, if they do sit for too long and they don't get used, there's a chance that the nibs will dry out and the paint will actually come out of the, I don't know if you can see it, will come out of here. If you push down too hard, it'll just kind of pour out. But I found that by doing stuff like that, it creates an interesting effect when you're painting with them. You can be really messy or really precise and they're kind of great for adding in final detailings and things like that on paintings. I actually want to buy more. <laughs> so I use these a lot in my sketchbook. And while I'm talking about markers, if you've seen any of my time-lapse videos where I provide taking time to relax with an art time-lapse videos, to help put some calm into your day, you might recognize this marker. I use it all the time. So it's from the band, uh, brand Molotow. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anyways, you can buy it empty because this brand and, and several other um, acrylic paint marker marker brands allow you to buy ink separately and then you can mix your own colors or refill your old ones. I specifically love using fluorescent pink as my um, sketching tool for when I'm mapping out areas when I'm gonna paint and shapes. 
So I created my own mixture of fluorescent and I did the same thing in this little dropper. So then that way, when I want to do more precise line work, I just drop this on my glass palette, use a paintbrush and draw. Or if I want to be more loose with it, I use this big marker. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so um, there's this, you know, it's, it's really thick and I just get, I am more broad with it and more loose with the way I draw. But it's great and it hasn't dried up on me. I've had this for about mm, over a year and it is, just trying to close it. It's great. It has a little ball in here, so it'll keep your um, paint in there all mixed together. I love it so much. And then I use the ink that I use to actually create it is from Golden. It's their high flow acrylics. It's basically a uh, paint that you can use with dip pens. It even says with a um, airbrush, you can use this as an airbrush, which is pretty cool. Um, so I have these. Next up is the Stablo 3-in-1 Woody. I first bought these and I wasn't too sure about them afterwards because I had found them thanks to another YouTuber. She was talking about how she had just bought it and she's a really big fan of it. And I was like, oh, that looks so cool. And then I bought it and I used it once and I was like, oh. And then I never used it again until about uh, six months ago, I picked it up again. The reason why I ended up really liking it is because it's thick. So if you just want to be like really rough with drawing lines or being, you know, getting strange shapes and angles and things and being loose with it, with this so thick, you can get really interesting lines and you can just be really loose with it because it's so thick and it's, you know, hard wood. So it's not going to snap like you were using like say a thin um, watercolor thing. And this is water soluble. I think these were designed for children, but that's okay. Um, so it works when you're mixing, when you're doing mixed media stuff, it works really well. And to continue along with mixed media stuff, I have some inks here. So this one right here is a beautiful green it's actually designed to be used with a dip pen. It's not artist grade ink. So it will, um, you can wash it off or wipe it away or dab and you know lift when you're using it in your sketchbook or on paper. Um, it's not archival that I have found. It does have little sparkles in here so you get a glimmer to it. It's really fun to use when you're working in your sketchbook for your healing with art time. The next up brand I really like to use for acrylic ink is the Dollar Rowney. Um, you have to mix them, like shake them really well though. The ink separates a little where the pigments are, so I definitely recommend shaking it really well before you use them. But I really like them. And this one right here, their pearlescent one, is more translucent than it is, say, opaque, like it looks in the bottle. I'm going to show you again an example like just now like in a second but it uh it's beautiful and shimmery and the last thing that i like to use is actually equaline watercolor paint it's liquid it's more like an ink but it's watercolor it's this weird combo of a thing and it's so fun to use in combination with the inks because they interact very differently um I'm actually gonna grab an example. So this here is just one of my, I sat down, I needed some me time, some healing with art time, and I used all these inks and watercolor and see how I had dropped the watercolor down first and then I put some ink here and I brushed it here with this. 
And see how the ink just went around it and it, how it interacts with the things. It's so interesting to see how the watercolor and the inks behave differently together. Creates interesting little details and paintings. Now that I've gone over all these little things, let's talk about paper. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna start and go through. <laughs> so on the top here, I have some examples of my acrylic paintings that I like to do during my healing with art time. And I paint on gessoed watercolor paper. When I am doing my watercolor paper gessoing, I have been using recently and really enjoying using Arches watercolor paper. And I understand for those of you who know what Arches is and who are like, what? Um, Arches is an extremely expensive watercolor paint uh, paper brand. They create um, really good paper. I'm not saying it's bad. Um, there's watercolor artists out there that absolutely love it and it's their favorite and they'll never use anything else. It's super expensive. And I was trying a new type. It was 140 pounds, supposed to be rough texture. I did not like it. I have had that paper for years now and I didn't like using it with watercolor. And one of the things I didn't like about it was the fact that my dog loves licking the paper and that weirded me out. I asked the internet why. And if the forum that I landed on is correct, um, the paper itself is not vegan. And there's a material in there somewhere that was drawing other artists and their dogs to it. Like they were trying to eat the paper. I didn't like that whatsoever. I thought it was really weird. I didn't want my dog to get a hold of a painted piece of paper with you know paint on it that might be questionable in safety for him. Um, and then chewing at it, so I never used it for watercolors. And then I ran out of paper one day, and so I decided to rip it up into sizes that I liked, gesso it, and then pin it to my board and start painting. And it is perfect for that. Perfect way to not waste expensive paper. I just ended up covering it and using it for a completely different reason. And the reason why I like it is it's thick, so when I gesso it, it doesn't ripple or anything. It is a little bent right now. And the reason is because of where I store my finished paintings. It kind of puts a, a bend in it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also really great. And it still provides kind of a texture to it when the painting is finished, even though it's been gessoed and painted, there's still a bit of a paper texture underneath. And I quite enjoy that. Next up, let's talk about my favorite paper for watercolor painting. I find when it comes to painting in general, I really like working on loose sheets of paper versus in a sketchbook. I kind of go back and forth between sketchbook, loose leaf, sketchbook, loose paper type thing. And when I do, I have two papers that I have fallen in love with that are perfect. So the first one here, cause I have the packaging is the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. It's 300 pounds. So that's 600 GSM and you get 10 sheets a package. And what I do to make it last a while, cause this paper is a little expensive is I cut it in half and that means I get double the usage out of it. And this one here is cold press. And the other one that I really like is this Fabriano um, hot press, uh, 300 pound watercolor paper. Um, I get this from Jackson's Art Supply. They ship it loose leaf, loose leaf. They ship it loose sheet and you can have it cut into quarters. So it's easier to ship to you depending on where you live. You might not want gigantic sheets sent to you. Um, so yeah, it can be pre-cut before it gets sent to you. This is the pre-cut size that I normally get. Um, I just want to see if my camera will show you the texture difference. But yeah, this is the 
hot press. It's not uber bumpy, but it still gives you enough texture that when you are working with your watercolors, you can really see the texture and gives extra grooves for your grainy paint to go through. And because it's cold pressed, the watercolors stay wet a little bit longer, which means you can you know, spread them out and have them bleed into each other with more ease. Where with hot press, it dries faster. So um, this landscape as an example. So it dries faster. So when I put this batch of water here, See how here it blends smoothly in here, but here it's more of a harder line. Um, in order to get that same kind of smoothness as you get here, you need to like do it right away. So wet, 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 wet fast, where with cold press, you can just, this paper has a little bit more wiggle room for time and going a little slower, where this hot press, you need to work a little faster. But I think that depends on personal preferencing and as well as what you're in the mood for when you are sitting down to doing your heart, your art time. I'm thinking of doing a individual review videos for each of these papers type. So let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to get a more in-depth view of the paper, you know, what it's made with, um, what kind of effects you can get with it, how long it takes to dry, what does the paint, how does it mix when it's on this paper, that kind of thing, you know, more in depth. Let me know in the comment section below. The second to last item I would like to show you is my sketchbook. So I got this back in 2021 um, and I'm almost done it. Um, so here's an example of that acrylic with the pearlescent. See how it's translucent? So nice. Um, so this is an Etcher, uh, cold press B5 sketchbook. I feel like that was kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> um, now what I really like about this is the paper. It's thick, it's stiff, it can really handle whatever I'm throwing at it. So with these two pages, it kind of gives you an example of me just throwing down ink and paint and layering and it, the paper is able to take it. Now, um, I have done some paintings where it's kind of leaked through the stitching, but because I'm not using this book as a professional standpoint, it is a sketchbook, it's, you know, meant to be messy that doesn't bother me but if you are the type that prefers it to be neat and tidy that might not be for you um it does really well with watercolors with ink with doing different types of meat um, materials like colored pencils um actually I used it with my acrylic paint. I did not gesso this paper. I just went with my acrylic straight onto it. It did okay, but the problem with doing acrylic paint right onto paper is that paper's absorbent, so it doesn't spread out as smoothly as it would if it was on a gessoed surface. Uh, but back to what I was looking for, <laughs> right. So this here, what's so great about this sketchbook is that it works with a multiple um, materials. So this here is watercolor, acrylic, colored pencils. So I did a little bit of everything on this sketchbook page and it looks really nice and worked really well and it was enjoyable to use. So like not every page in my sketchbook is beautiful and not everything is in order either you should note that this says maybe this says 2021 but over here i did this one maybe three months ago so <laughs> but yeah um the sketchbook i really like it 
the fabric here is supposed to have the purpose of you actually painting on it so you can make this as decorative as you want it i've just left it um, i'm going to do a review of the actual sketchbook when i'm finished it and i'll leave one page blank so you guys can see exactly how paint flows on it and everything like that I'm losing my voice um <laughs> but yeah this has been my go-to sketchbook this year um and i really really like it now i'm going to show you my last item that i want to show you that's new to me that came to me only a couple months ago that i love so much um i just i don't know if there's enough space i feel like i should move the camera maybe oh maybe i'll do that one second please This here is the Yugo Plain Air Palette Box thing from New Wave. That is not accurate at all of a description, but it is the Yugo by New Wave. Um, so <laughs> the Yugo is a portable um, canvas. Sorry, if, uh, this is a little wobbly right now. My table is not level. So I'm apologizing as it happens, but basically you open it up. I have a glass palette here to do all my color mixing on. It comes out too. So this part is magnetic and the palette slides out so I can clean it. If I'd like to take it out of here and clean it or I can clean it while it's in there. There are magnets on here so you can add accessories. So you can have trays on the side and I have one of those trays. Um, and then this right, sorry. Uh, this right here is um, all magnetic and there are the canvases so you can hold your canvas in place or your sketchbook and they come with two options. So they have the basic one that comes with it and then you can buy an extra one that will hold thick canvases. Because I like to do a lot of my little paintings on paper, as you saw, I'm just gonna put that there. I use this and it's just a board. I bought it, it's a canvas board that's non-framed and I put it in here. And there we go. So what's great about this is, and why I love it so much is that um, I can use it anywhere. I can use it in my office. I can use it outside. I haven't, I haven't really used it outside, um, but I do have times where I want to say, for example, paint standing versus sitting, or if I am in the mood to sit, but I want to move. I like that this is portable and easy to use. I was previously using my huge canvas um, easel and then having a big board on there and it was so cumbersome trying to do my little paintings with it. So I decided to go this route to make it easier for me when I'm doing my mini paintings. And I love it so much. And it's stiff too. So this doesn't like snap down really easily. You have to put some pressure behind it. And on the bottom, it has a tripod attachment area. So you can attach it to a tripod and you can use this anywhere you go. Okay. <laughs> so that is everything that I have used in the year 2022 that I have absolutely loved. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the materials that I showed you or anything like that, and you wanna know more about it, um, if I've already done a review, I'm gonna have a review for you in the description section below. If I have not made a review yet and you're interested in one, let me know in the comment section below. I will love to put one together for you. Um, if you are interested in learning how to use art as a tool for healing, if you deal with stress, anxiety, or any mental health issues, that is what I focus here on. 
my YouTube channel is supplying you guys with videos that will help you during your day. So hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you liked this. And before I sign off, let's just take two seconds to take a deep breath in. And let that air out. And as we do, let's focus on bringing in some positive air in with our next one. And breathing out any negativity. Alrighty. Until next time, everyone. Stay magical.